Listen to Joel Granis' sexy voice. What a fucking stud, I tell you. Anyways, um, I am installing the wiring to get ready for the Nexus R5 that's gonna be going in. And I wanted to show you this, guys, from the last video. That's what it looks like if you don't prep it. And again, I think over time this is going to have issues, but I wanted to go ahead and tackle it now. This is also 180,000 miles in a car that, for most of its life, was daily driven to about 130,000 miles with a guy's daily driver. Um, so it's all, all the elements in Northern Virginia, salt and all that stuff. Those are the original, I guess, bearings or hubs, whatever you want to call it. So I figured might as well do this now, keep that from happening, prevent it as long as I can to keep it as pretty as I can. But doing the wiring, doing the same kind of setup I had in the past. So let's go back here. Kind of some things I want to change now. Um, some of the wiring stuff isn't ideal. Again, it's a very basic setup, but it works. And I don't want to change something that I know works right now and I'm really happy with. The Odyssey battery cranks up, works fine. Drill the hole there. I know back in the day you could use this, but that's on the frame rail, goes directly up to the frame rail up there, which gives better ground that way. Um, it's one for one, I like that. I'm gonna change this power instead of being on here, that's for the fuel pumps. So even if I kill the switch, it still has power here. Terrible idea, I'm not sure why I did that. So I'm gonna move that down here, or what I thought about doing is making a lug uh, stand. So running something off here with the one gauge or zero gauge wire running over here to a stand that has like, three or four break-offs for stuff like that instead of running everything off the studs. I, I definitely like the idea of less is more, but I think for cleanliness and for the right way to do it, I need to put like a glue a stand there and run wiring over to it and then power it out from there. And uh, from there, I think that's the most ideal and the cleanest, most proper way to go about it. But what I'm doing right now is running the wiring. So I'll have access here when that time comes, but I'm going ahead and running the wiring down through. So what I do is, when I did it last time, uh, all of this was off but I don't have that luxury this time around. Uh, so you can take all that plastic off, it's how you break it. I don't wanna take the chance, especially if I'm not painting the car right now. So this is the trigger wiring that was ran originally for the AEM and stuff. I can use the factory setup that's back in there now. Um, I should probably ask Jose what he wants to do, if I should remove this or not. Um, Cause what he does is he taps into the factory wiring that's over here. I think this is the plug here. Is this where we tap into it? Oh no, I'm sorry, it's back behind here where we tap into. Um, you just have to take this back piece off, the target top holders, and then this piece here. You just pop these little covers off and it's just the factory fuel pump wiring trigger. Now that's only for dual pumps, so even the setup I have now, I'd need to run another trigger. So part of me's thinking, leave that wiring for now because I might need a third pump and what I can do is use that wiring because those two triggers there, I can use those, they're right up front and can attach to them and just leave this wiring. I don't need both of them, but I would need one because this will let me trigger two pumps, I believe, but I can't do three pumps with that wiring that's in there. Um, so this will suffice. I have to check with Jose, uh, triple check that because ideally I would rather not having this and use the factory wiring going in through the car. That's all tucked away instead of the secondary wiring so I could get it out. Just looks a little bit cleaner and nicer. All right, so here's where I'm at right now with running the wiring and stuff up back behind. So I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna clean all this up. I think I'm gonna make a patch here. I might even take this, move that to there because it's just one bolt hole. So move it to right there. So it frees up some room and I think I'm gonna put like a, just double-sided tape or something or, I don't know, set up like a lug station here so I can run a power directly over, the ground directly over, and then go from there out. So something to there, so on and so forth. The reason for that being, just so it cleans up a little bit, again, just wire management. Um, this is the big wire, this is zero, or yeah, well, it is zero gauge. Uh, a little more slack than I need, but it's better to have it back here than not. Because I can always cut it down, re-lug it back here, not a problem but it's tucked up under here. I put it underneath this again, just so it doesn't rub on anything. There is room in there. Then from there, da, 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 you take the back seats out. There is a screw right here, screw here. And then you just have to work around and shove it up under here. Uh, when I did the wife's, I really tucked it in. So it's really back in there, but it's not rubbing on anything. I want to make sure it's clear. I want to make sure of that too. It's really well up in there. And then all you gotta do is put the screws back here and here in. The hardest part is bending this out some to put it in here. Didn't exactly enjoy doing that, but you have to. The next part is up under here. You see the wire running, big black one. Um, it fits up under here nicely. That side's a bit of a pain and I'll show you here in a little bit, but it fits up under there. This all clamps back down. It doesn't push on anything, doesn't rub against it. Um, you could zip tie it here. I personally, once you put this in, I don't think it's a problem. I then run it up there, as you can see, and then I have excess wire sitting in there for right now until I decide where I want to cut it down and I'll re-lug it then to the to the area it needs to be. But yeah, that's it. So I can click this down now and it's done again. I made sure to run it here. I guess I could have ran it back. Well, I'd have to pull this out, but I don't think that's gonna hurt anything that little bit there. But yeah, so now I can click this all back in. 
Just move this over. Click that, click that, that, that. And it's in, and it's not pressing it out or anything. You can see it fits in there very nice, no problem. Then you just put this rubber piece back on, like so. There we go. Push that up, boom, boom. There you go, Jimmy. Just like I did in that video, there we go. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I always do that voice to creep my wife out. She always hates it, so. Of course, if your wife hates something, you do it more. That's just how it works. It's the nature of being a husband. If you don't bother and bug your wife, are you really a husband? No, you can't be. Now for the other side, it needs to come from here and go up. Well, again, I'm gonna relug it so it'll be down there, but I wanna at least do it from here, but it needs to go up, move just like I did and go up back behind, right? Not a big problem you're thinking in your head, right? Ryan, not a big problem. You'd be correct, kind of. The problem is right here, it gets like stuck. There is, hold on here, let me pull up on this. This one's already, this tab's broken on this one. You can see the tab broke off years ago. The problem is on this side, see how there's these cables here? These cables here are for your uh, hood, or for your trunk latch and for your other one. When you're trying to pull in there, it causes a bit of a bind up. Um, and also puts pressure on them, which I don't like. I actually, on her car, I made a little mistake and it broke the one clip off. So I had to actually buy it, replace it all because I wanted it to be right. So be very careful when doing it. I was fortunate when I did her car, I had everything out so I could really route it properly. Um, not saying this isn't routed properly, but I could see everything easier. I could do this a lot faster. This time around, I'm not as fortunate. So this will suffice, but it's just a little bit more annoying. Now my next thing is, I was hoping to have enough wire. This is the wire I actually had underneath the car before. Now it's inside the car. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna have enough because it needs to run from there, up, over, down, and then up and over the dash, down the other side, and then the, where I lug it and station everything is in this corner. That's where they come together for the ground lug and for the uh, power lug. I, I put them into like, I call it like a power station. I lug it all together again, kind of like I want to do here in the back. So it has one area, everything lugs together, makes it super simple. If you watch one of my old videos, you'll see that with the wife's car. I don't think I have enough wire here. I think I'm like a foot or two short. So I've got this here. This is oxygen free copper. Um, as you can see there, this is where we get, let me see here. This is whatever new concepts, I heard the company, uh, but this is OFC oxygen free copper wire. Is it necessary for this? Probably not, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. Wife's coming home. So yeah, but I don't think this is gonna be enough, which sucks. Uh, so I'm gonna have to buy another like 15 or 20 feet, which is about a hundred bucks. Now everything in here is a hot mess right now. Um, I did have to order more wire. So the wire I have is like literally a foot and a half short and I have extra wire so I could crimp it and extend it. But my brain says, I don't know. I just can't do that. I don't know why. I, I don't know because it's gonna be the main power source for the ECU. I don't want any breaks in between. I know that seems stupid, but I just rather not, especially if I'm tucking it all. Don't wanna find a weakness and it'd be up behind the dash. Um, what I did do though, since I got rid of the trigger wire here, it's, this is a mess, I'll clean this all up, um, but ran it over here to the OEM way and I pinned it backwards and it matters because once this is in, it's in. I could have hardwired it, honestly, um, but I wanted to make it a plug. So you use the green and purple wire here. Jose makes it pretty easy with the green and purple there. And it's your factory triggers. So there's pins up front here that you can easily get to. So when someone makes a harness like Jose or anyone else, uh, you can trigger it easily instead of running separate wires. Uh, when we did this years ago, he didn't do that. Now he does. So that car set up that way. And I just converted it to that just because, well, it's already there. Why run more wire if I don't have to? That's less running up here uh, and something that's already built into the factory sheathing. So it makes it a little bit easier. Put it all back together now. Um, again, I just have to freaking wait till that other wire comes in now. Um, and I guess it doesn't matter because this car's got to go to paint first. But wanted to show you guys that. Uh, very basic setup. I love these little fuse setups from Kaizen. Hold on, come on, get off there. Just very simple. But let's see how two fuel pumps do. Um, I got two 525s. Let's pray that that's enough for what I need. I might have to add a third one um, and just go from there. But this won't work then. I can use the fact that I can use those triggers still but I won't be able to use um, this setup because it's only set up to do two pumps. So we'll see how two 525s do. I really, really want to hit the goal. I like. I just like to be over 1100. I know that turbo will do more than that and the engine's built for more, but I'm just, I don't know. We'll see how it does. So as you guys can see, put the panels back on. Doing these little pieces here is always a bit of a pain trying to get this out. Use a little plastic pry tool. These come out. I finally got these plastic covers too. Bought those from Toyota. 
the, the la these locks themselves you can't, but the covers here you can still buy, so I bought those. This is a brand new piece too, um, and you can still buy these little plastic covers, brand new. They're it's still, Everything's salty when I think about it, because when you start adding it up, it gets expensive. Like, oh, it's only a buck, but when you're placing all of them, all of a sudden you're spending $25, $30 on little plastic covers. You're like, really? Is that worth it? Stump stuff, but that's tucked behind. I probably should have sheathed that. It's partially sheathed here, but I should have just took that sheathing off and resheathed the whole thing. I don't think it's going to be an issue, but that would have been the proper way. Just like the wiring saw running up there, I did that years ago when Jose gave it to me because I didn't know any better. Um, even the way it looks right now, like a true motorsport guy, I'd be like, this is terrible. But at the end of the day, this is probably better than most people have in their cars. Um, it's just learning process. I try to be hard on myself and I want people to give, you know, feedback. Um, I know I should probably, people say I should also get a mil spec, a true mil spec harness, like truly done, Tefsa wire, everything. I just don't think my cars are there. I love the way they look, don't get me wrong. But, you know, even everyone I know that ends up getting the plug up there, the only time they ever use it is the one time, especially on street cars, is when they go to refresh the car and then they end up getting a new harness. The reason those plugs are worth it when you get the firewall plug is if you're a race car and you have to pull the engine constantly and you're leaving everything else down below. But most people I see on the street with them don't ever touch it. It looks cool, don't get me wrong. I just can't justify it. Plus it creates another failure point. I know someone's gonna say, as long as it's done right, it shouldn't be a failure. I get that, but it does. Let's face it. So anyways, I'll shut up. Um, yeah, I do need to redo this. I did take the power from here, moved it down there because I was giving 12 volt uh, power constant to the fuel pumps. I'm like, you idiot, what happens? Uh, something fails. There's a reason why the switch is here. So moved it there, but I don't like that either. I'm going to probably keep this here. I'm going to remove this off of it, make a little lug station out here and have all the power lug station for the power stuff go there. Um, I need a grounding station too, because you got to ground here for the fuel pumps. I need to shorten up that wire, see how long that is too. That can be dramatically cut down. That just looks janky. Um, and then also I'm gonna need another ground. There's gonna be another ground lug that needs to go to the front. So it makes more sense to run one strike down and run out, but also like to try to keep it simple. So at what point do you add too much and it just looks stupid? Again, this is me talking out loud, being stupid. Um, so yeah, enough of that. Waiting for the wire, it's supposed to be here tomorrow. I'm gonna go ahead and get the panels ready and I'll show you guys that process too in this video. This is completely random right now. The car is so nasty and dirty, but this key, which I, the guy who cut it for me did a piss poor job so it doesn't even work and they're now out of business. Um, this is from Chris Floor. Look how cool this thing is. I have one more blank left, but I'm afraid to get it cut. Look how cool that is. But I'm afraid to get it cut because I'm like, is it gonna, is a person gonna cut it wrong? So he sent me two and I've got another blank and I'm just afraid to even get it cut because it's such a cool thing. So I keep it on my key ring just because it's badass, but that's brass, look at that. Or copper, it's brass, it has to be brass, not copper. Look how cool that is. Um, no, he didn't ask me to say anything either. I just, just saw it in there and I'm like, man, that's cool. I'm not sure if he still even has them, but I thought that was like the coolest thing ever because Supra's never got cool keys. GTRs, 300GX, every car got a cool key. We didn't, wish we had something like that, but he made us something cool and it won't mess up the, uh, oh, the little key switch there either too. When you get titanium, um, it messes up the tumbler in there, destroys all the stuff in there because the titanium is such a hard metal. Uh, the wear item is actually your key. The tumbler should last forever. You don't want your tumbler going bad. So just a reminder, titanium keys, bad. No, no, no. Now, here's the other ricer thing I'm doing. So. I kind of want to show the cam gears off. I don't know, I know the factory, but I was going to do this, but I got to cut it down to fit the billet valve covers. Billet valve covers are always wider. Um, it'll fit here, uh, the back piece, but the sides here, so you can see, always rub against. I had to always do it on these ones too. God, when you guys see this, look how badly it's cut, but you can see I have to do on this, that one there too. It's just poorly done. I cut it after the fact too. I hit that there one time, but I hold on to all these anyway, so they're mine to keep forever. Uh, but when you run these billet valve covers, you have to kind of shave this down. I got this off Amazon for like 15 or 20 bucks because um, I wanted the one without the stupid logo on it. And uh, it was just, that's the only way to get it. But as you can see here, it just hits. So I need to like shave this down. Um, I don't think I have to go too crazy. I think I just need to mark both sides and just start shaving a little bit. I think it'd be all right. Um, the other thing that sucks is there's no inserts for this, so I'm gonna have to figure out something because the bolt will go straight through. See how big the hole is? The bolt's gonna go straight through, so I gotta figure something out so the bolt stays, or this is just gonna fall off, and we don't want that happening. And I think I'm also gonna paint where the blue line is here back. I'm gonna paint that black, find a gloss black that'll work. I'll scuff this all up and then paint it. So all you can see is forward because I don't want you guys to see the wiring here because when you put like a cover like this on it, take that off the wall become wall art, which is nuts. Whoop. Come on, get on there, son. Line up with the hose real quick. 
So when you see that's on there, it covers most of it, and that would go here, like that. But again, the reason I run it is I'm like, I have this big fear again, being up north of a rock getting in there or something. I'll have the billet front covers on it here, um, but I wanna be able to kind of see it. I'll have to polish this up some too, because that is actually in the plastic. That's how it came brand new. Again, 15, 20 bucks, what do you expect? Um, polish it up a little bit. I think it'll be okay. Keyword, think. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are, th thoughts are on that. Thoughts are because it's got that Darth Vader look right now. I've got another one of these down at uh, Vagworks, um, or VPC, whatever you want to call it, but Vagworks is what it's called. Um, and he's doing some crazy colors on that one just to do something off the wall. But I'm not even sure I'm gonna run it because I also have another one of these that's getting painted right now green, uh, thanks to Travis Beaver at Beaver's Auto Body. So got a bunch of stuff I'm trying to do all at once. All right, so this is what it looked like when I'm all said and done here. It's um, pretty darn good. It's not perfect. Now, I did do something perfect. You see the tab here lines up with it, right? So I wanted to paint that black. What I noticed though, I never realized it before, this is actually offset forward. So I was like, okay, I need to make a decision. I want to make sure both are black, so I just went ahead and cut it over. Now again, this is not perfect. Uh, I have to use a shit ton of tape. Um, so the edge here could be a little bit better. Again, I don't think anyone's going to notice that, especially once it's bolted on and everything else around it's black. I got somehow under or spray got in here because I mean I taped it all off. I must not put it tight enough because I was spraying on the top and bottom side because I'm afraid it was going to bleed through some. So I wanted to spray both sides of this so it makes sure it stays nice and black um, because I think that sem paint that's gloss black really lights light through. It's it's meant for like plastic panels on your interior. So it's meant for something that's already a solid, not a clear. So it's meant to help and I get why they do it that way. So it took a lot more coats to do this. I sanded it some too, which I wish it wouldn't have done. I have adhesion promoter, which would have worked just fine. Sprayed that on, let it sit for four to five minutes and then sprayed it down. So I wish I would have just done that. But now I need to buff this out a little bit more here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clear coat this whole thing inside and out so this doesn't yellow. Uh, Tom Barbosa just let me know that that will yellow over time. So thank you for letting me know, buddy. Watching Tommy F, yeah, now. I like some of his videos. Some of the stuff he does, I'm not a huge fan of, but I like, I, I don't know, I do like it. I think he, um, some of his stuff is pretty cool. I like the way he builds the cars or his employees build the cars or whatever like the JDM and stuff of it. Um, that's kind of how I figured out or found out about the whole zinc coating thing. I kind of knew about it, but he kind of, watching his videos convinced me like I need to do that. So just need to get some of them fixed. Anyways, back to this. So put my first coat on, I did the tack. First coat I did in SEM, like the semi-gloss, just to see how it looked because I can always go over top of that because I need to do like four or five coats with this aluminum to make sure it really adheres. Um, it only takes five, 10 minutes at most for it to, for your next coat, so it doesn't take very long. I'm not sure I like that, so it's, it's drying here. It's still not dry enough for me to tell, but I think it needs to be gloss if we put it up next to it here. Yeah, I think it has to be gloss because I think that almost stands out like a sore thumb. Maybe I'm wrong, but I mean, I have the gl gloss here. I just wasn't 100% sure but I think that's the route. I'm gonna go gloss it next and just keep layering it up until she's looking Gucci, son. So five total coats, coats, coats. Um, I'll bolt it up then. This stuff usually dries that you can work with in 10 minutes. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. it. I just sprayed it on there too, so it's pretty glossy right now. Need to let it flatten out some, make sure I applied it properly and I might have to hit it one more time, but that's five coats. The first two are really light. The last three I did pretty heavy to make sure it sits on there. I'm just gonna let it go. I'm a little unsure of this area right here, um, but the top of it looks good. So I don't wanna even get near it. I'm just gonna stay away. But my wiring showed up a day early. So today's Sunday, makes me happy. I'm about to lug it. I already had lugs. I use this tool then to smash the lug down. I did buy a crimper so I can do it inside the car now. Jose is gonna be happy I'm not using this anymore, uh, but it's worked really well. It passes the yank test, so I put it on the vise and yank it. it. This stuff works well, um, but you really gotta hit it hard. I've seen the other crimpers. Jose had warned me about it. I guess someone had bought one. Tell him it wasn't for me, but the crimper doesn't work well. It doesn't crimp it properly or crimp it enough. When you do this, it's on there. Um, you're gonna hit it with a dead blow or, or a, a sledgehammer of some sort. Um, I think I need to cut this a little bit more because I want that push all that wire up in there as much as I can. So I think I need to cut it back just a smidge more and uh, take that sheathing off, push it inside there. I've already got the install gear. 
um, piece on it there. Again, this is the auction free copper wire uh, from New Concepts. Again, I could have used what I had and just extended it. I don't know why my brain says I had to get new and just not even get new because I reused the other side there, but wanted to make sure it's one continuous piece to the ECU. Didn't want any problems there, shorting it out. At least I could rule it out this way. I'd feel a little bit better. Um, and I can use the other wire for other objects or other items I'm gonna need here in the future. Uh, it'd just be nice to have. So gonna finish this up here, show you guys as I install it. So this is what it looks like then. Once you stamp it, it has like a little plus symbol. You'll see the marks on the back side too. Um, what, I think I put a little, cut a little too much off because um, once you hit it, it pushes some out because there's only so much room in there once you distort it. But I mean, it's in there tight. Went ahead and did the vice test. Now, make sure you go ahead and sleeve it first. You can get it over, I've done it before, just a pain. Um, I'm gonna put that install gear side down, slip it over, torch it, shrink it up to it, uh, and then you've got your ground. Now I'm gonna run this the whole way up, which show you that though, I'm gonna shut up. Before I put this away, I wanted to make sure, here's this color I use to spray paint the throttle body. There's the number, gloss black, same color coat. Again, uh, I'll get it bolted up here later, but I wanna make sure it fully dries before I put my dirty little greasy fingers all over it. So I let it hang there for an hour or so, go watch the kids. Um, this is all on now, just heat shrinked it. Again, works out really well. This thing is pretty awesome, but what sucks is if you gotta lug something, like I run all the wire, last time what I had to do is I ran all the wire, see how I wanted it, cut it, then pull it all out, set it over here to the side, had to put this down to concrete with this and just bang it with the hammer, then run it all back. Just it kind of, it adds more time, and I'd rather buy the $50, $60 tool to crimp it so I can do it inside the car. Um, but this still comes in handy because I think this does the best crimp because you can really smack it. Um, kind of works well. Here's how the throttle looks. I don't have it fully bolted up because I just ordered one of those um, adapter pieces like I have on Cat's car that allows this to be a quick clamp. But look at the match on this, guys. Paint, powder coat, and that's spray paint. I swear to God, Sem paint is literally magic. All I used was that adhesion promoter and that paint, guys. Uh, this is about five coats, and that's how it came out. I did make one mistake here. I put tape too far up, and I tried to hit it after the fact, and it's just too far now again. I don't think... It's going to be that big of a deal. Uh, it's not on this side where you could really see on the top or anything. And it's right at the edge, and thank God it's not downside. But, of course, it is somewhere visible. So it's a little annoying, but not the end of the world, I guess. But did really good. I'm really happy with this. I made sure to bring the tape line out just far enough because the clamp goes almost butts up to that piece. I want to make sure it's not visible. There's two O-rings that will sit in here. So I wanted to make sure it didn't interfere with any of this paint-wise and stuff to get into mess with the sealing abilities. But really happy with that. I think... All murdered out is like my favorite thing. I love that look and other people hate it. Um, I am gonna add color. Like I said, this is all temporary. This will be blacked out here, but this panel, even the billet one I have, is gonna have some color to it. Um, but I like that murdered out look. Uh, I, I guess it's better than me than the chrome look. That's my opinion. So yeah, that turned out phenomenal. I just wanna look at that. Mm -mm -mm. Did a really good job on the tape line. That's what I'm probably happy about. It looks like it's almost powder coat. Like the tape line, I got a perfect hard line on that. So it looks like a professional. I even went the whole way around. Now, I did tape off the bottom here, so in case someone ever, and I need to figure out the part number if I did it or whatever, I just put a piece of tape over that because I want to spray the whole way around it here so all of it's black, so even these little tabs are black. Probably could have done a little bit better job right here, but again, it's on the bottom side, no one ever sees it. And then I taped this off too because I didn't want the plug, I wrapped it, taped the whole way around it, so I didn't want, I guess, paint to get gunked up for taking the clip on and off just to be safe. But now it's time to install this. Uh, I think I'm going to finish out this video and put this, let's actually, let's go ahead and show this in this video. We're going to finish out the video with having this in it. I wanted to show you guys this too. This is a new crimper. This is the one I'm going to use inside the car. I think it's labeled wrong again. This is off Amazon, but that one aught there, I think that should be down here because unless four aughts bigger than one aught, I don't know, but I think because this is my zero, one zero gauge and there's no way in hell that would work for that. So I think this is the actual crimper is this one because I don't know if the other one would even work. So I'm gonna see if this works. I'm gonna test it outside of the car. I'm gonna get a piece of spare wire I have over there. Uh, try crimping one of my crimps on, see how it does. If not, I'm gonna take it back because I don't need junk tools. So I'll let you guys know how that does here in the video too. So this is what I wanna talk about running on this side. Two reasons, one, I gotta run up and over now because like that side, once you get to that corner, you're done, right? Now I gotta run this up and over. But the real problem here for me has always been this right here. So this cable here, this is your latch cable for your trunk and for everything else. You don't want to put a bunch of pressure on that. So I got this pulled out right now. Got I had to run it back through this little hole there. You can see it's out still. I gotta tuck it up under yet. I'm still not done. Push this up here and all that stuff. But really it's this cable here because I gotta, there's not enough room because no matter what, see like I'm stuck right now. And when you put this in, the carpet doesn't sit right. 
So I'm trying to figure out how to do this without putting pressure on that cable. So that's the only thing I don't like on this side. Um, just a little bit less room. There's more wiring and stuff here. Probably half this wiring is dead though. That's, again, realistically, these cars are to the point now, especially as much as we remove. The whole car needs rewired. They're seriously to the point now that a rewiring of the entire car probably would make sense. We're damn close to that. Um, wiring could be a lot smaller, more efficient, because I mean the taillights, none of them are halogen anymore. Everything is just simpler, easier, so on and so forth. So everything would be less wire, smaller wire, simpler, so on and so forth. Um, especially this, besides the third brake light, there's no wiper anymore. There's something else. There's a couple other wires up there for something. I don't know what else it was. I can't think of it, but there's just a lot more stuff that can be removed. Again, runs there, up, over, um, and it'll run back behind there. I just gotta get that tidied up. Once I figure out that section, I'll bolt that down in there and then run it up and over. So this is just the unfun part. So that pretty much wraps it up, guys, because I cannot finish this until I get the ECU, because I like to cut the wires to the correct length. I'm gonna do some cleanup back here again. I'm not sure what I wanna do. If you guys have some suggestions for some blocks and stuff, I wanna get this off, I, this again, janky. I just don't want anything that I have to drill into the body. That's my biggest thing, no drilling of the body, so it has to be mounted to a factory hole. I still regret doing this to this day. I know it's supposed to be more effective, but I don't like it. So I don't like that, and I've got two holes holding this in. But the rib nutted in, that's not rib nutted because I went directly to the chassis. So if you guys got any ideas of how to mount this somewhere, put a block, because I wanna get this from here, mounted over there, or even mount it here, and then run the wire from here up and over. I just, um, I'm looking for some, just some suggestions here on how to clean this up. But thank you guys very much. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.